Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, little bit chilly day here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, deep in the oasis of freedom on this lovely, it is a Monday morning, it is January 24th, 2022, I believe, and now that I have sold Crazy Crane Campground. I need to get out of my gas sucking car and find another piece of Florida swampland to buy, to flip in a couple of years. But the four year old Doomer house flipper uh, gets on the road again, uh, doing what I try to do every day. And that is to bring you your daily dose of Doomer porn. And so, just as I need to preface all of my rants, I don't know what's going on with this camera, with this battery, or the charger. But anyway, I'm in the market for a new camera. So if this rant disappears in the middle, I will put the link on and you can just finish it yourself. So anyway, uh, I want to thank Alert... Uh, listener brother JJ lieutenant JJ for sending me this essay um, by this doomer chick now I read an essay that she co-authored with William Reese a few weeks ago I read an excellent essay that she and William Reese wrote together but we're gonna uh, give her the full credit here this is a woman named Megan Siebert, a new Doomer chick on the scene, Megan Siebert, and Megan uh, has, this is her review of Don't Look Up. Uh, she is not a fan of Don't Look Up after all of the positive reviews, including my own double thumbs up of Don't Look Up. Uh, which I'm going to uh, defend myself on my positive review at the end of Megan's rant. If the battery survives, I'll say a few words about my own positive review. Uh, but anyway, let's hear what, what Megan Siebert has to say about don't look up and why she was afraid to even watch it called uh, she has a group called ending overshoot ending overshoot and this is <coughs> uh, her blog from there which she titles don't make me watch the new climate film celebrates malpractice martyrdom and enviros of all stripes are cheering it on and she has a great photo of a herd of sheep a herd of sheep uh, talking about mainstream uh, enviros I guess uh, so ending overshoot basically studying the question we have outgrown the planet how do we get out of this mess and obviously she doesn't think that don't look up is a way out of the mess take it away megan siebert i had to force myself to watch don't look up it was painful just as painful as it's been to watch the litany of reviews, including my Collapse Chronicles Sam Mitchell, yes, extolling its virtues with one righteous climate scientist and environmentalist after another, claiming to identify with the valiant yet unsuccessful fights put forth by the film's heroic characters. Of course, this was all predictable, which is why I tried to avoid watching the movie and remain in a bubble of detached bliss, protected from the nonsense I suspected would ensue. 
but still, surely I thought, more people than just me and a few comrade in arms would see through the misplaced self-indulgence. Mainstream enviros would have their congratulatory field day, yes, but surely there's a strong contingent on the fringe who saw what was plainly obvious to me and my small posse. Perhaps this is a cathartic clarion call to that silent contingent. As heroic as climate scientists and climate activists are often made out to be, the trouble is that most of them are barking up the wrong tree. They have made the wrong diagnosis and are offering up a snake oil cure, a cure that is not only totally detached from biophysical reality, but that would actually make the real problem worse. Even the few who do grasp what that real problem is still mostly do not understand its full implications and are offering up incomplete or altogether off the mark solutions. So let's start with the diagnosis. We have no hope of fixing a problem or curing a disease if we don't fully accurately understand it. The diagnosis sold to the public by mainstream enviros, this includes climate scientists, climate activists, and the environmental community at large, is climate change. Climate change, we're told, and as most of the public is convinced, is the fundamental problem facing humanity. <coughs> the existential issue of our time, <coughs> if we do not address climate change, mean surface temperatures and extreme weather events will make much of the planet uninhabitable for humans. As to the cure, mainstream enviros tell us that the way to address climate change is through a fourth industrial revolution. We need to replace all or some enviros seem uncertain on this one. <clears throat> Fossil fuels with clean, green, environmentally friendly, zero carbon energy sourced by solar panels, high-tech wind turbines, hydropower, and nuclear. But again, enviros are torn on which of these are actually clean and therefore acceptable. We need to electrify everything, we are told, since these miracle technologies <clears throat> only generate electricity. To do these two things, we need to embark on a World, World War II style build out. All we need is for governments to wake up and take action and for capitalists to realize all the profits waiting to be made from building the new stuff. Then, boom, existential crisis solved. Catastrophe averted. In short, isolate the sole problematic variables in the system replace it, then tweak the other variables so they can interface with the new one. But the system can remain as it is. All we need to do is switch out some parts, making them greener and fairer. Wait a minute. If we sober up and sleep it off, we can shift gears and think anew about this half-baked fantasy with our big boy and big girl pants on. Returning 
to the diagnosis with our fresh perspective and new pants. <clears throat> any systems thinker, like any good doctor or healer, can see that climate change is only one symptom of a greater disease. What about all the other life on the planet we're killing off? What about rampant pollution of all kinds everywhere? What about water scarcity and all the soil that's being blown away and washed through the sea? And all the social dysfunction and upheaval and dissatisfaction. There is a common thread to all of it, including climate change, and that thread is ecological overshoot, our real problem. Overshoot is a basic ecological phenomenon that occurs in nature and is taught in any ecology program. It can also be deduced from common sense. Hmm. It happens. Overshoot happens. <coughs> Here we go again. Overshoot happens when plentiful resources enable a species to grow exponentially to the point where it is then where its then excessive size outstrips resource production and the ability of its surroundings to process its waste. The susceptible population, in this case humans, then crashes, i.e. there is a massive die-off perhaps even abetted by disease and or predators, and the habitat is then able to regenerate slowly over time. Overshoot can happen to any species under the right circumstances. It has happened again and again throughout documented human history, and it should be no surprise that we're in the midst of yet another boom and bust cycle right now, an unprecedented one because of the sheer power of our technologies made possible by a one-off inheritance of fossil fuels to extract resources, multiply our numbers, and prodigiously generate waste. Hence, the underlying crux of our intertwined and social ecological crises. There are too many of us consuming and polluting too much. Climate change is just one of many pollution problems, but it isn't the problem. It is a symptom of the underlying problem, which leads to the truly effective cure. If overshoot, too many of us consuming and polluting too much, all enabled by fossil fuels is the problem, then the solution is pretty simple, theoretically speaking. Bring down our numbers. Bring down our numbers and lessen the demands we are placing on the planet by ceasing fossil fuel use. In other words, orchestrate our own bust before nature does. Why? Because we can do so humanely and with less suffering, if we choose to, than nature's bust, which will be painful and chaotic. Now, of course, Megan knows damn well that we ain't going to do this.
she she knows she is spouting horse shit hopium just like uh, any of these climate change people i mean i agree with every word uh the woman is saying what we need to do but it ain't gonna happen i know this megan knows this uh william reese knows this anyway now here is the rub this sounds rather lovely what with its timelessly appealing message of living in harmony with Earth. Except to those who have started hurling the predictably ludicrous buzzwords of eco-fascist, racist, misanthrope, totalitarian, lover who wants genocide, etc., etc. Let's not engage with their juvenile absurdity she left out the word uh what is the word they're always using i'm having a senior moment uh good lord you know they say word retrieval is the first thing to go the word that that that, that she left out eugenics eugenicist if you suggest that lowering the human population uh, all across the board uh, is the cure, the ultimate, the final solution, then you are a eugenicist. I, I'm surprised she left that word out. Uh, let's not engage with their juvenile absurdity. But what would it actually look like in practice? Even those who grasp overshoot as the underlying problem do not always understand the full implications of what it will take to respond effectively and within the bounds of reality. An honest, sober assessment of overshoot, of overshoot, <clears throat> an honest, over assessment of overshoot leads to the unavoidable conclusion that number one modern techno industrial civilization exists only because of fossil fuels and will cease to exist without them what lies ahead is not merely an issue of tweaking the system or electrifying and greening everything or just lessening our impact what is before is that our entire way of life is built on a finite energy source for which there are no quantitative or qualitative replacements once that energy source ceases to exist whether we choose to stop using fossil fuels or we run out because the remaining reserves are too expensive to tap, so too will the system itself. But this is a good thing because as we all know, the current system is broken and toxic. We want something entirely new and viable to rise from its ashes. Okay, conclusion number two. What is being sold as renewable energy technologies are not renewable or sustainable. <clears throat> An abundance of evidence supports this common sense assertion for those who wish to seek it out. My organization, Ending Overshoot, is a great compendium of this information, both our own analyses and those of others. And uh, it is a great place for more rants on this, Ending Overshoot, which means we have to get real about what actually constitutes renewable energy. They are the basics. Woody biomass, passive solar, simple mechanical power generated from wind and water, and human, possibly animal, if we so choose, power. 
And then there is the cutting edge, that which we can rediscover and discover anew, reconceptualizing what energy means, moving beyond the limited mechanistic and digital domain. And conclusion number three, responding to overpopulation goes way beyond stopping continued growth or having smaller families. It means getting down as rapidly and of course humanely as possible to the one billion or fewer people that can actually thrive sustainably and in material comfort without fossil fuels and everything they unsustainably enable. In short, there are three, there are roughly three main camps. The first camp is people who think that climate change is the problem who shout, climate change, governments need to act, by which they explicitly or implicitly mean building solar panels and wind turbines and electric vehicles and the like. It's easy to get climate change. It's an entirely different matter to see the bigger picture within which it rests and understand what will actually alleviate it and what will actually, perhaps counterintuitively, make it worse. People in this camp have the wrong diagnosis and the wrong cure. <clears throat> the second camp is comprised of people who get overshoot, whether to some degree or fully, but who still advocate for what I call faux renewables, who do not go all the way on overpopulation or even touch it at all, or who still advocate for some form of tweakerism, saying we need degrowth or less consumption does not cut it if you are still advocating for and abdicating on these things. Recognizing that faux renewables are not sustainable and are in fact harmful, but still advocating for them, whether as a permanent solution or a bridge or in small amounts also does not cut it. Understanding that planetary boundaries have been exceeded, but thinking that overpopulation isn't a culprit or that faux renewables would not exacerbate it or that more recycling, also known as a circular economy, is the answer. Does not cut it either. This camp has, for the most part, the right diagnosis, but for the most part, the wrong cure. And finally, there are those who get overshoot and the trifecta that faux renewables are faux, that a sustainable population is one billion or less humans, and that modern techno-industrial life is impossible to maintain without fossil fuels. Right diagnosis, right cure. Don't look up implicitly paints people in the first camp as heroes, people who, who are giving us the wrong diagnosis and proposing the wrong cure, yet are lamenting that what they're saying is falling on deaf ears. Even people in the second camp 
who can see past the narrow lens of the climate only diagnosis are identifying with the film's heroes simply because they have been shouting from the rooftops seemingly unheard about some aspect of our predicament. But shouting from rooftops is not enough. We need to be shouting about the right things, particularly when so much is at stake. The problem with the movie is that it celebrates martyr martyrdom for the wrong cause. It celebrates malpractice on a grand scale. If you identify with martyrdom, that's fine. The wearing it on your shirt sleeve probably isn't the best look. But identifying with myths and even dangerously guided martyrs, that is just about as topsy-turvy as the film's bass awkwardness, the very insanity it laments is ironically precisely what it embodies. So who is Megan K. Siebert? She is founder of the Real Green New Deal Projects. Project. She is a systems thinker, truth teller, allergic to bullshit. She is a bridger of science and spirituality, a lover of design and aesthetics, and her group Ending Overshoot. Things we need to know about and to chart a sustainable course to a beautiful future. Our pursuit of perpetual growth is a dead end for civilization. It is time for a new chapter. Amen, Sister Megan K. Siebert. Now guys, <clears throat> unbelievably the battery did not collapse. Uh, just real quick, for those of you who heard my review of Don't Look Up or haven't heard it yet, you can find it on here. I gave the movie two thumbs up, but the reason was that I, that I was so clueless, I was, I was so naive, uh, I, th I, I completely misunderstood that 99% of the reviewers would think they were talking about only climate change, which I guess they were. If you listen to my review, I don't think I ever used the term climate change uh, anywhere in my review. Now, I also don't think I used the word overshoot but I certainly use the word overpopulation. And uh, I was giving uh, the, the, docu the, uh, the movie makers and uh, particularly Leonardo DiCaprio way too much credit because although I, I did not use the term overshoot, it was certainly implied that my review was uh, the you know the comet or the asteroid coming at us was the whole system leading to the collapse of a planet. So I implied that, uh, as, as Megan was saying here, that climate change was just one of the ingredients, you, you know, uh, of the comet. That it, was, that it was the system, and especially uh, the system including way too many people, that it was overpopulation, which is the number one ingredient of overshoot. But anyway, I just had to, uh, uh, Megan, if you're listening to this rant, just so you understand, I gave it two thumbs up because I was simply too uh, stupid to understand uh, that the other people who were giving it uh, thumbs up uh, thought 
perhaps correctly, that all they were talking about was climate change. So I hope my weak defense hasn't uh, put me on your shit list, Megan. I don't need to be on any more Doomer Chicks shit list than I already am. But now that uh, we have had a our morning dose of Doomer porn, <clears throat> I have to go gas up my gas-sucking truck and uh, head out into the Florida swampland to find another piece of swampland to buy so I can flip it to some clueless moron uh, in a couple of years and keep the system going. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, keep your system going while you still can. Bye guys.